Ben Kirkhouse, we're going to the Packers. Ben Kirkowski has a monster question, but the basic gist of it is um, he recites all sorts of PFF grades and tries to explain his premise and this whole thing. The basic gist of it is uh, none of the, the offensive line history of, of who the Packers are going to trot out there is not good. Their grading is not good. Is that essentially going to hold the Packers back this season? No. They have Aaron Rodgers at quarterback. They're fine. Um, also, like the offense, it's not that bad, is it? Like, what am I missing? The- so Rick Wagner was playing right tackle last year. Previously, right. you, you saw Brian Bulaga. They have been a good, had a good, solid right tackle for a while. Corey Lindsley was the highest graded center, and he has been yes. entrenched there since what 2014. So you have regression at center, likely regression at right tackle, where Billy Turner is a guard playing tackle, and then Lucas Patrick potentially playing right guard. Yeah, I don't. You have a great left side. Like if Billy Turner's playing right guard, if they just had one, if Rick Wagner was back and he's a tackle and Billy Turner sneaks back into right guard and your only big question is at center, I think they're okay. But I think there's a lot of question marks there besides, you know, Bakhtiari's a stud at left tackle and then it's all questions. Bakhtiari, Elton Jenkins. Jenkins is the, good. The left side is fantastic. The right side we talked before that they have contingency in Dennis Kelly. Like if Billy Turner is a disaster. He's okay. I mean, he's what, the 20th, the 25th best right tackle in the NFL? Right, which if you have Aaron Rodgers at quarterback is fine. Like if if Billy Turner is a train wreck, Dennis Kelly comes in and suddenly you, you're back to what you just said. You have four out of five fine offensive linemen Aaron Rodgers can probably make up for the fifth not being great, and you're you're good. I just think the offensive line is not preventing this Green Bay Packers team going anywhere. Yeah, I don't think it's going to be. It's not going to completely hinder them, but I don't think it's the strength that it's been. There'll there'll be some games where it shows up. How about that? It's going to show up in some games. Okay, they're going to lose an extra game or two because of it. I don't have as much as much as much faith in the offensive line. All right, Minnesota Vikings. This is from uh, I'm not Pembish, Mr. Pembish. <laughs> Echrun Hembish? <laughs> How's that? Sure, yeah. With the talent level on the roster, is Kirk Cousins raising the team ceiling or limiting it? Or does it just come down to that darn O-line? Well, with the current talent level that they have, Kirk Cousins I don't think is capable of raising it to a level of, you know, contending. Cousins uh, is not a ceiling raiser. No. And so the more interesting thing is like not – like in the current talent level, he is not helping that improve. But the question is more like how much is he responsible for the current talent level? Like how much is his contract responsible for the talent being where it is right now, which he is not elevating to where it needs to go? That Like it's a it's this sort of circular issue with C- Cousins. He Yeah, he's not a quarterback that's capable of bringing everybody to a higher plane than they're currently capable of playing at. But he is also responsible for the that state of state of affairs generally, um, which is why, like, let's be honest, the Vikings are not winning anything with Kirk Cousins as their quarterback. Yeah, I, I, I think Cousins has played well. Yes, better I think than you could have expected when you signed him. Yeah, he's he's one of those guys. I think has always been he's always been good statistically. We've talked about this a lot. Um, he's gotten better from a play by play grading standpoint there's still something missing there and it's it's probably the stuff that goes above and beyond the grades it, it's a lot of the uh what makes a brady a Peyton, well, what makes those guys great adjusting to situations and knowing when to be aggressive knowing when to be conservative taking care of the ball at the right time all of that stuff i think adds up and i think that's where cousins is just not great so i think he's a good solid quarterback i don't think he's ever going to raise the ceiling i think he can help you be productive on offense and that's just where he's at He's also, like, if you had an elite offensive line in front of him, it might be a different conversation. But the Vikings have consistently missed on the offensive line, and they've never been able to put him in that situation. That is the one thing that might change my mind on this. If Minnesota had a top three offensive line, and you're asking the same question, yes, maybe Kirk Cousins is actually capable of elevating the receiving core to a different level. Ding, ding, ding. So it does come down to that darn O-line. Yeah. Uh, Lions, Michael D. Smith says, how likely is it that Goff is an, as opposed to the, answer for the Lions? He can be an answer, giving the small uh, trend to de-emphasize the quarterback and focus resources on other key positions. Assuming his salary isn't cost prohibitive long-term, or he takes a, uh, it says haircut. Yeah, that's a phrase. Takes a haircut? Yeah. Oh, I thought it was just a 
That's a, so that's a, a term for taking a pay cut? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, if it takes a haircut. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> You've never heard that before? I haven't. I haven't actually. Or maybe I have. I just didn't remember it. Yeah. A lot of other stuff in my brain. Sure. Yeah. Not room for that. So could golf be an answer for the Lions? Micro machines is in your brain, but that isn't. Yeah. Yeah, There's only room for so much. Uh, I don't. I don't think he has really much of a shot to be an answer because because of the way they prioritize building this team. Like they would need an unexpected level of performance from the group of players he's throwing to. You would need Hawkinson to be really good again. You would need like someone like Amonra St. Brown showing up as a rookie and being really good right out of the gate or one of these other receivers on the depth chart to be unexpectedly a lot better this season. Just to give him the like just to give him someone to throw to because clearly Goff is not like raising the performance of everybody around him. So if you're even going to get an idea of whether he can just tread water as a starting quarterback, you're going to need something better than what they currently have on paper. Like if as as things look right now, it's like how could where does he even have a shot? I think this question's asking more long term though. You but know, you, but two, in order he's got to make it past this year first. So you've got to see somebody two or three years from now. Could Goff be the guy? So in other words, could they? I keep thinking, okay, they, they want to be in the Spencer Rattler sweepstakes. They want to be in the DJ Uyagalele sweepstakes in oh, two God. years from Clemson. You know, that's the future of the Lions. They're going to draft somebody. But what would it take for Goff, to, for, the, for them to say, yeah, we'll build around this guy. We'll make everything around him great. He's made it to the Super Bowl before. We'll do the same thing the Rams did. And, and to me, that's not the play. I think the way that the Rams thought, even though they paid a lot for Stafford, their thought process of, we got to get better at quarterback. You want to keep getting incre- incrementally better at quarterback. I think that's the best play for the Lions. So I wouldn't say I like Goff. I think he's a good player. I think you always want to try to get better. So I, I think he's an answer until they find the answer. Sure. But I don't want to take the chance at building around Goff. Yeah. I mean, my point is, I just don't think they're going to get to that discussion because I don't think they have the receiving group. And there that's, and that's fair for too. him to even make it a, 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 a make it a conversation. Yeah, that has if, to be had. If he elevates that group, then they're going to have it. We'll see. Yeah. But okay. That's not going to happen for the bears. The simple question, when should the bears start? Justin Fields, go listen to the PFF daily. Cause we break it all down here today to give bears fans a little something today. What do you make of the Andy Dalton? statement that we joked about at the top it's his time andy <laughs> dalton's time so go to listen to the pff daily it's audio only uh wherever you listen to podcasts we break down the bear situation their offensive line situation what they should do with justin fields what they should do with the offensive line or how good the line's going to be dalton it's not a phrase i would have put out there if i was andy dalton what would you say i understand that as a starting quarterback in the nfl albeit on, <laughs> with a an extremely small amount of time before that's no longer the case you have to have a certain mindset and you're probably quite unhinged as a human being. Like this idea of Tom Brady and Aaron Rodgers and Michael Jordan, like those guys being able to find slights in the most absurd and ridiculous things to just power their inner fire and make sure, like fuel them on the hate of everybody else. Um, there's something to that, right? So when you're Andy Dalton, you can't go out there with the mindset of like, I'm just keeping this thing warm for Justin Fields over there and it's only a matter of time before my ass is hooked to the bench. On the other hand, you have to at least be aware that that's the situation. So when you go out there and you're like, oh, yeah, this is my job, you just look silly. Like, there's a way of not saying that. There's it's the a way. Truth. It's his job. It's what he's, he's, he's the starting quarterback. Does that matter? When he utters that sentence, he becomes a meme. And there's just, there's ways of avoiding being Hi. memed. Oh, that's a different way of saying it. As a former professional athlete. Yeah. Who was, ne- you know, was never like the guy uh-huh. or anything. You have to believe in yourself. You got to. I'm you not gotta disagreeing. Go. I'm saying you don't say it. Why? It's his time. Why? Because you get memed. said it's his time. Because you get memed. It doesn't mean like, oh, it's I, I'm the Bears quarterback for the next four years. You know, Justin's going to be sitting on the bench. Like, right now, it's my time. It might be a week of time. It could be 16 weeks of time. There but are, it's my time. There are quote graphics out there of Mike Glennon when he said this. All you're doing is creating a bunch of those for you. That's social media's fault. Yes. That's the idiocy of social media because Andy be Dalton's aware. statement was perfectly fine and people went and made news out of you it. You have to be aware that is going to happen when you open your mouth. Well, it's people who are being stupid making news out of stuff that's not news. Welcome to 2021. Yeah. Well, but I got to make sure I quote tweet this graphic and show you how snarky I could be. Got to do it. That's the world today. Yeah. Well, yeah. it's a silly world sometimes.